Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the source of all mercy and the God of all consolation, who comforts us in our sorrows so that we can comfort others in their sorrows with the consolation we ourselves have received from God. Thanks be to God. When we were baptized into Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Let us pray. Eternal God, we remember with thanksgiving those who have loved and served you on earth, who now rest from their labors. Especially on this day, we remember those who we now name before you. Keep us, O Lord, in union with all your saints, and bring us with them to the joyous feast of heaven through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Be gracious to us. Hear us, O God. Deliver your people. Hear us, O God. You loved us before the world was made. Hear us, O God. You rescued the people of your promise. Hear us, O God. You spoke through your prophets. Hear us, O God. You gave your only Son for the life of the world. Hear us, O God. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. Great is your love and was born of the Virgin Mary, Great is your heart. who by his cross and suffering redeemed the world, Great is your heart. and has washed us from our sins, Great is your heart. who on the third day rose from the dead, Great is your heart. and has given us the victory, Great is your heart. who ascended on high, Great is your heart. and intercedes for us at the right hand of God. Great is your life. For the gift of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. For the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. Thanks be to God. For the great cloud of witnesses into which we are baptized. Thanks be to God. For Sarah, Abraham, Isaac, and Rebecca. Thanks be to God. For Gideon and Deborah, David and Esther. Thanks be to God. For Moses and Isaiah, Jeremiah and Daniel. Thanks be to God. For Miriam and Rahab, Abigail and Ruth. Thanks be to God. For Mary, mother of our Lord. Thanks be to God. For John, who baptized in the Jordan. Thanks be to God. For Mary Magdalene and Joanna, Mary and Martha. Thanks be to God. For James and John, Peter and Andrew. Thanks be to God. For Paul and Apollos, Stephen and Phoebe. Thanks be to God. For all holy people, our forebearers in faith. Thanks be to God. For the noble band of the prophets. Thanks be to God. For the glorious company of the apostles. Thanks be to God. For the white robed army of martyrs. Thanks be to God. For cherubim and seraphim, Michael and the holy angels. Thanks be to God. Be gracious to us. Hear us, O God. Deliver your people. Hear us, O God. Give new life to your servants by the grace of baptism. Hear us, O God. Strengthen all who bear the sign of the cross. Hear us, O God. Clothe us in compassion and love. Hear us, O God. Bring us with all your saints to the river of life. Hear us, O God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty Father, you have knit your people together in one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant us grace to follow your blessed saints and lives of faith and commitment, and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Okay. Let us pray. 
Gracious God, we do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from you. Bless Zoa and Paulette, who will read to us the scriptures. Make us hunger for the word of life, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The first reading is from Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make all people a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, that sheet that is spread over all nations, he will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God, we have waited for him, so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Please join me in singing from Psalm 24. <laughs> Also he said, write this, 
for these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Judeans who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Judeans said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if, if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks. Praise Thanks. to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The last time that that text was read in this room, it was 110 degrees. <laughs> it knows the extremes. <laughs> um, that is the last time that text was read in this room. It was, uh, it, was a, it was a Saturday, and it was the end of a very long week of filming. It was the text that had been picked for uh, the, the, re the anniversary service and the reveal uh, at, at Queer Eye. This text has been very central to me, both in my story of, of coming out, not just because we have this great line where Jesus tells somebody to come out, but, um, but more so because of how it ends. But... Right now, this text comes to us in the midst of all saints, a different temperature, a different setting. What I think is important for us to hear in this text, there, there's a lot going on in the different readings that we have. We, we have promises about a life fulfilled, a renewal of God building a new world, of God inviting us all to a feast without cost. We do hear a bit in the Psalms about a righteous life, but we ought not think that that means that we need to get our act together because again, the invitation to the feast is an invitation that comes without cost. The feast itself will be the righteousness of the people. But for John in this story, it plays a very important role. It actually shows up twice. It's, it, it's out of, it references itself uh, out of order uh, in interesting ways because it references this whenever uh, Mary uh, goes to anoint the feet of Jesus. 
Uh, and then I believe that's referenced the first time that Mary shows up in the longer version of the story. Those two things are connected in the author's mind. We don't need to worry about that, but what I want us to look at is that Jesus, who is God with us, you know, the whole thing in, in the book of Revelation of, see, I've made my dwelling with the mortals, that the heaven comes down to earth rather than the people going up to heaven. God always comes down to where we are. That this, uh, and actually the book of Revelation uses the same word that the that, that God tabernacled, is tabernacling with the people, which is the same word that the Gospel of John uses at the beginning when it says the word became flesh and dwelt among us, that the word became flesh and tabernacled among us. So this is what, what, what is being taught about. Here we have God in our midst who understands grief. While there are promises in the book of Revelation about a world to come where tears will be wiped away, this is a God who has cried those tears. Who has stood among the people and seen his friend dead and wept because of everything that that means. What's coming for him? What death means about separation? All of that, this God experiences in that moment not just that little moment where he cries, but he's deeply moved. Like what, two times in that text it mentions that? This is a God who is experiencing the same grief that we have experienced when we experience loss, whether it's a loved one, all the things that this has pan pandemic has done to us, uh, whenever we experience depression or any kind of emotional physical, social wound. That loss, God has experienced. And this God speaks in the midst of that experience and continues to be the word spoken by God that brings life. And, and in that moment, as a sign of everything that is also to come, speaks and tells Lazarus to come out of the tomb. We all know resurrection is not easy. Whatever form resurrection may come to us, it's not just cut and simple that you walk out of the tomb. This story knows that. What I think is so fascinating about this account of Jesus bringing someone back to life is it does not simply end with Jesus calling Lazarus out of the tomb it ends with Jesus calling the community to unbind him and let him go. It ends by, G by, by God, by Jesus saying, uh, I am not the only player in this resurrection game. I, I might be the force behind it. But that God invites the community to participate in the liberation of other people from whatever death or loss that they are experiencing, God invites us as church to unbind one another and our neighbors and to let them go. That this grieving God knows what it takes for a community to heal. And it is the practice of resurrection. To stand with the the man or person who stinketh. Uh, I still like the King James, uh, Martha's line. Uh, Roll away the stone, and in the King James she says, the Lord, surely he stinketh. Um, it stinks. There is awareness of that in the text. But to go ahead and to call that person forth and to unbind them, to do what it takes to breathe life back into their world, And eventually, for Mary, the reason why the foot wash or the anointing with oil on Jesus' feet is connected to this story, this is the moment, this participation in resurrection that so overwhelms Mary with joy that later she will just have to break down in absolute worship of the one who spoke life in the midst of death. 
I don't think that just comes from Jesus calling Lazarus from the tomb. I think it comes both from that call out of the tomb and the invitation to the community to participate, to reconnect, to rebuild with this person who had been cut off. It will end with a feast, as will our worship today. That feast will be our righteousness. It will also be our participation, our, our invitation to participate in unbinding the person in our life who has just been called from the tomb. It will be an invitation to participate in their resurrection, to unbind them and to let them go. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God has made us God's own people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess the faith of the church. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God. And for all people according to their needs. Merciful God, we give thanks for all missionaries who have brought your message of hope to new communities and white tears away. Continue to raise up courageous missionaries to share your gospel of hope. We remember our bishops, Elizabeth and Patricia, all the Senate staff, our Dean, Regina, and Fernelli, our pastor. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creating God, we praise you for abundant, har abundant harvest and for the goodness of creation. Create communities of fair for your earth so that all land, water, and soil will be celebrated and cherished by future generations of saints. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of peace, we give you thanks for nations of peace that serve as a refuge for all whose homelands are afflicted with violence. Strengthen those who continue to work for peace and support all veterans who carry the scars of war. Lord, in your mercy. Hear yeah. our prayer. God of healing, we give you thanks for healthcare workers who labor around the clock to answer cries for help. Bring wholeness to all who struggle with post-traumatic stress disorder, anxiety, depression, addiction, and all who hope for healing in any way. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of justice, we praise you for the freedom ministries and for all meals that bring people together for nourishment and fellowship. Bless chefs, bakers, servers, dishwashers, community assistants, and meal ministry coordinators. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We remember our ministries and community partners. By my side, Lutheran Settlement House, United Lutheran Seminary, Fishing and Sea Chamber Music, SOL Collective, Prevention Point, Project Safe, The Simple Way, 
more voice to hear, and all those things for which you are preparing us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear those prayers of concern and of thanksgiving which we now lift before you. For everyone in our city who is vulnerable to our increasingly cold temperatures, for the people of Syria, Palestine, Yemen, and Ethiopia. For Joseph, our president of the Polish Republic, Lord in your mercy. Hear our prayer. All the four prayers are outside in the cold. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. God of the ages, we give you thanks for the saints of this congregation who have inspired, challenged, loved, and taught us. Wipe away our tears and lead us by their example until we feast together on your holy mountain. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you see that we need. Grant us, Father, for the sake of your Son, who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Christ the living word dwells in you. Thanks be to God. God.